Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365 where we demystify Microsoft solutions for the MSP space. In today's video, I'm going to be covering a comparison of Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 or Cloud PC. This is very popular news that just came out of Inspire. And in today's video, I'll just be doing a high level breakdown of the comparison of these two solutions. Before I get into today's video, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here though, I am just going to be doing this high level just to save you some time on what I consider to be the biggest comparison features as part of the solutions from Microsoft Desktop as a Service. If you do want a full technical breakdown, Nerdio has come out with a great article that I'll link below here which really goes into the weeds and gives you some comparison charts of all the licensing, the admin considerations, the architecture considerations, everything like that. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Getting into it here though, I want to start off with the pricing model. With Azure Virtual Desktop, you're looking at a consumption-based model for all the utilities that you have spun up within the Azure subscription that you've procured, and you only pay for what you use. With Windows 365, you're looking at a fixed-based model where you're having a per user per month subscription at a fixed rate and this is something that you assign to a user within the 365 admin center. This is in addition to their typical 365 licensing, but you don't have to worry about unpredictable cost with this model, which is one of the main benefits. From a configuration standpoint, Azure Virtual Desktop has always been known to be a little bit more difficult, requiring a specialist or somebody for Azure that's pretty sophisticated to create the architecture from the initial configuration and then set up things like auto scaling to help you save in cost by utilizing those features that really reduce the consumption that you have in a month over month period. Microsoft has recognized that and companies have been created because of that difficulty like Nerdio for instance, which puts on a full front end to that management layer to simplify that, which is one of the main pain points that occurred whenever Microsoft originally came out with Windows Virtual Desktop, which was rebranded into AVD. Windows 365 Cloud PC is responding to that as well by significantly reducing the difficulty of setup. And this is something that now takes way less steps, so that's one of the main benefits. But one of the downsides is the lack of control that you get from an administrative standpoint. With AVD, you can go ahead and set up all your utilities and resources really as you see fit. You have some customizability to define things like static IPs. And of course, you get into that concept of auto scaling to try to save costs over time. With Windows 365, you're handing more of that control to Microsoft. Microsoft's doing more of the backend work from a setup standpoint, configuration, but they don't give you much flexibility in the customizability of the solution itself. So if you have granular settings that you want to define or things like that for customer environment, it may be a little hard because they only allow you to resize the particular machines that are being delivered as cloud PCs to your end user and that administrative ability is greatly reduced from that. You still have the ability to see statistics and things of that nature from within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center but your control compared to AVD from an application deployment to configuration of settings and all of that is uh, significantly reduced. Scalability is another follow-up to this. With Azure Virtual Desktop, you have the ability to do single user sessions as well as the ability to do multi-host pool user session so that other users can leverage the same VM resources so you don't have to assign a per user in a one-to-one -one like fashion for the assignment. This also allows you to auto scale based off of that demand when resources are stretched thin so that you can create new VMs whenever you need them versus having them all available and not being used 24 by seven, which is technically what Windows 365 is providing a single user session that is always on, always available for that particular user. And there is no flexibility in the sense of reducing your per user per month fee. From the end user standpoint, there's a lot of similarities between AVD and Windows 365. Windows 365 users go to this custom URL you see down below. They're able to do certain administrative tasks like rebooting their device, as you see in this particular screenshot here. But after they go to open a browser and they click on that button, it takes them into the remote desktop web client and the experience that 
typical AVD users have been accustomed to today. Additionally, end users have the same experience in the sense that they can pivot from one device to another and pick back where they left off in the sense of their work or any applications that they had open. This is everything I wanted to show for you guys in this video, a shorter one, I just wanted to do a high level overview. There definitely will be more videos coming out here soon around Cloud PC as Microsoft will be revealing more information about pricing and it will go into a public preview. So we'll be able to do a little bit of a deeper dive. Please feel free to post any questions or comments below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space.